But the US Open done for the year and the last massive amount of points given out to those players who hadn't played last year or didn't do well last year. We have some massive changes in the rankings, especially at the top of both the men and the women's rankings. Let's go have a look at who won the US Open last week for the men and the women. Starting with the ladies and Coco Goff, of course, taking home the trophy against Sabalenka. 266362 to lift her first Grand Slam trophy. And yes, she did get a boost in the rankings. And on the men's side, Novak Djokovic taking out Daniel Medvedev. 637663 to lift his 24th Grand Slam trophy. And he also got a boost in the rankings thanks to winning the championship. But let's start with the players that are outside the top 10 who have got a boost in the rankings. Started with Ben Shelton. He goes up to number 19 in the world, which is a career high for him after making the semifinals of the US Open. 28 spots higher than last week. Borna Goyo. He goes up 29 spots to number 76 in the world after qualifying and making it to the fourth round. He's also at a career high. Madison Keys making the semifinals of the US Open. She goes up six spots to number 11, closing in that top 10 again, but also closing in on the race to the finals as well, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Have a look at the players that have gone down in the rankings and it's players that did well here last year that didn't defend their titles or their points. Matteo Berrettini, he's gone down 30 spots, number 66 in the world, after struggling to get through his matches and also ended with injury, unfortunately for him at this US Open. He's gone down in the ranks. Nick Kyrgios, he didn't play because of injury and he drops more to 469 in the world, 335 spots lower than last week's. So his ranking is pretty much non-existent. And Tomanovic, also dropping down the ranks, 170 spots to 297 after failing to defend the points. And this was her first tournament back from injury, so... A little bit rough there to drop a rankings. But there's some big drops there for players that did well here last year, but couldn't replicate it this year. Okay, we're going to start with the WTA rankings because there is a change at the top. Arena Sabalenka is now the new world number one, overtaking Sviantec. She's been sitting behind Sviantec for the best part of a year or two. She was also behind Barty back in the day as well when Barty was number one. So finally, she gets to be the best player on the planet despite losing the final of the US Open. Fiance comes in at number two. And Coco Goff, after winning the US Open, goes up to number three in the world. Career high for her. Three spots higher than last week. Rabakina stays in there at number four with Pagula getting pushed down to number five. Von Drusova, she gets a boost up to number six in the world, which is a career high for her. Three spots higher than last week. Jabur goes down to number seven, two spots lower than last week after failing to defend the points from last year's US Open final. Mukova, she goes up two spots to a career high number eight. Again, having a good week, making the semifinals of this US Open, pushing Sakari down to nine. And Caroline Garcia goes down to number 10, three spots lower than last week after losing the first round of the US Open. Last year, she made the semifinals. So really in danger now of dropping out of the top 10 completely. Last year's WTA Finals champion, but some huge changes to the rankings on the WTA, especially that big one up the top. Looking at the race of the finals now, and players are starting to qualify. Sabalenka and Sviantek are obviously still qualified. They qualify before the US Open, but now Coco Goff, she goes up two spots into that number three spot, pushing Rabakina and Pagula down to four and five, but that means Coco Goff is now qualified as is Rabakina for the WTA Finals. Pagula still not qualified, but she isn't too far behind. Wondrusova stays at number six for this week, but we have more changes in the middle with Mukova going up to number seven, pushing Jabir down to number eight, and Madison Keys going up to number nine, seven spots higher than last time, pushing Kvitova down to number 10, and Bencic being pushed out of the top 10 completely completely for the race of the finals. So now we've got four players that are qualified, four spots up for grabs. Who's going to take those last few spots going into Mexico at the end of October? Going over to the men's side of things. And again, we have a change at the top with Novak Djokovic reclaiming top spot after winning the US Open. Of course, Alcaraz had nothing to gain and Djokovic only had to win one match to take that spot, but he took one match and he really makes a gap between him and Alcaraz now. So Nole should be number one for the rest of the year. Alcaraz there at number two with Medvedev staying at number three. Runa stays at number four to despite losing first round of the US Open. We have a change in the middle. With Stefano Tsitsipas getting back to number five, two spots higher than last week. And Rublev also going up to number six, pushing Sinner down to number seven. Fritz goes up to number eight. And all those changes are because Rude goes down to number nine, four spots lower than last week after failing to defend the points he made at the final last year. And Zverev, he's back in the top 10. After making the quarterfinals of the US Open, two spots higher than last week, pushing Tiafo out of the top 10 completely. So some big changes there to the rankings, and it's getting really jammed up in the middle part between four and seven. Even to put in Fritz at number eight, 
It's really getting jammed up in that middle part of the rankings for the men. Over to the race of the finals now, and Djokovic reclaims top spot over Alcaraz. Not that that really matters because they're both qualified anyway. But Medvedev, he finally qualifies for the ATP finals after making the final of the US Open. So good to see Medi in there. And they are the big three of the season. I think we can all agree. Sinner stays at number four, but not qualified yet. Not too far behind, though. A couple of good weeks in Asia could get him there. We have a change in the middle with Rublev going up to number five, pushing City Pass down to number six after doing better than City Pass at the US Open. Runa stays at seven with Zverev at eight, Fritz at nine, and Rude rounds out the top 10 for this week. But we've got five spots up for grabs. And it is really close between guys like Runa all the way down to Rude. There's only a couple hundred points. So it's really going to be crucial for those guys to do well at the Asian swing in a couple weeks and on the hard courts in Europe at the end of the year to get those last couple of spots to play in Turin. So there it is. The US Open done and dusted. And I don't remember ever doing a ranking show where we've had the number one on the men and the women change. Of course, the men's rankings change every other week, it seems, when we do these shows. But for the first time in a long time, we have a new world number one uh, in Sabalenka. Of course, Sviantec held that record for a good part of a year and a half. Uh, takes it off Barty, who had it forever. So a third number one ranking, uh, third number one player in the world uh, on the channel for uh, for the first. It's very rare that we get these new things happen on the women's side. Men's side, we've had Medvedev and you know Djokovic and Nadal, everyone going up and down. But let me know down in the comments below. What's been the biggest shock this week for you? Is it the fact that maybe Kyrgios is so far down the rankings? I mean, he's virtually unranked. Uh, Berrettini also dropping down a lot. He's injured too, so that's a bit of a shame. Uh, or maybe that someone isn't as high as you thought they would be after having such a good US Open. But US Open is done and dusted. Massive ranking points all handed out. It's a big changes up the top.